Bryce Tyler here at Finn Mishawaka checking in with defending champions 3940 Cybertooth. Every single year, Cybertooth has some of the most aesthetically pleasing robots, but this robot very functional as well, too. A lot of great things will be rolling through on this. Awesome under the bumper intake. Uh, they got a great trap mechanism. I just watched their last match scoring in the trap. It's so cool to see uh, with this, but some other cool stuff, too, from their targeting system. We talked about actually even how they secure their battery in. So much more to learn about this robot coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. Support Fun's content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and Fun members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Lydia, we're going to start with the belly pan here. You have a great electronics uh, setup in here. So talk about why it's so important to mount your electronics that way and just anything else that's cool going on with this. Yeah. So um, pretty much this is kind of one of our staples of our robots. We really like doing our electronics like this because it allows for really easy access between matches. Um, if you see, we've drilled out different little screws for it to go in. Um, we also take wire management very seriously. It makes it very easy to see what's going where and how different things go together. Now, I see a little bit of Cheeto dust, by the way, underneath <laughs> in here. Is that any considerations in regards to uh, getting stuff into your electronics? So. Um, that's been a consistent problem throughout the season. Uh, we do, we have a small vacuum that we tend to take to it. All right. Um, in general, it hasn't caused us issues yet, but it's something we keep an eye on for sure. Yeah. This wiring, by the way, is just so very clean on this. Uh, what advice do you have for other teams in regards to packaging electronics? What have you learned from it? Um, Pre-plan, like have, we like to take whatever area we're gonna have and kind of draw out where we want things. Um, it's helpful instead of just going in with no plan to kind of just think through it first. Molly, now we got the robot back up. Uh, you're doing something cool in regards to your battery housing. So talk to me about your battery springs that you're using. So yeah, it's very important to us to make sure that we can have quick battery changes. So one way we do that is we have these little metal clips that are super easy to take off. Um, so And then under, underneath we have springs that will easily pop our battery up so that we can take it out and then get a new battery in real quick. No smashed fingers, it's super easy. So. Is this something, by the way, that other teams, uh, like, have you made this publicly available or looking to make it publicly available? Because I think this is something other teams could really benefit from. We definitely should. Um, the springs have been a new idea for us. Um, but, yeah, I think sharing it with some other teams would be some would, would be a great idea. Yeah, so if you do a police post on, like, Chief Delphi stuff, I think this would be really cool uh, for teams to learn from. Awesome. Let's start to go into some of the mechanical aspects of your robot as well, too. We're going to pass it back uh, over to Lydia, talk about uh, your under-the-bumper intake. We'll be following that note journey through uh, into your shooter as well, too. So this is such a smooth process that you have. Walk me through uh, what you have and why did you go this route for your robot? It's been working so well. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, we planned... We at first actually planned to do an over-the-bumper intake, but um, as we learned more about the game, we realized how kind of inefficient, or at least for our design, how that wouldn't exactly work. So we've gone with an under-the-bumper intake. Um, this, of all things, have been <laughs> the one we've had the most iterations on, uh, figuring out the exact amount of grip to put on the tube, but it has gotten, it's improved so much. We also have these 3D printed plates that will guide the note into it so that it doesn't get caught up. So then, once it comes through the intake, it'll come through what we call the trapper, which we'll talk about more in a minute, and then it comes into our intake. This intake has a preset to be right up against the subwoofer, and it also has uh, auto-targeting with our limelight up here. Once it detects the April tag, uh, my controller will vibrate, and it tells me when to shoot. Very cool. Can we see a note come through, and uh, let's show off that process. Well, the pill didn't quite catch it, but that's okay on there. So overall, very slick and very smooth uh, for what you have so far. When you were looking at doing uh, and approaching the Crescendo game, what made you uh, want to go, you talked about the intake, but how about the shooter-wise? What made you want to go with such a slick packaging that you have? Um, I think one of the big things, one of our driving forces for this robot is we wanted to be short enough to go underneath the chain. Uh, and that's proven to be very beneficial so far. Um, being so compact just gives us um, it's a bit harder to work on, but it gives us a lot of room to experiment with and 
just make a design that's very compact. Yeah, and a lot of are silly, and you're starting to get your auto uh, tuned in more and more. I watched your last match getting more of that multi-note auto as well, too, which is really great for that. One other thing we haven't talked about yet is your trap mechanism, and Zach's going to be covering more about that. Your last match got the climber up and going, scored in the trap area, so cool stuff to see with that. Walk me through why the trap was important for your team to go for in the first place, uh, and then if we can see kind of how that process works, too, it would be great. So I think the thing that was uh, most important about the trap was just having that last point because you never really want to end on a, uh, a tie. It's always good to win by one point rather than lose by one point. So what we really thought of was just having two arms. And so basically without this trapper arm, you can't really, you can't climb at all because it will lean up against, <clears throat> up against the trap and then climb up. And so, so you intake it through the intake. It'll, this will come up and it'll shoot it into the amp. And just like that, uh, it just pops out. Well, that was uh, had way less momentum than our uh, previous speaker shot oh, yeah. there, by the way. So, by just a little bit. Um, so, trap-wise on it, you know, we talked a lot about packaging this robot. Any big considerations of that? Because you know, when you look at trap, a lot of times you have to almost build a new subsystem. Sometimes your team is integrated quite well yep. uh, for what you're doing. So, talk to me about how that process made a, or worked in regards to even making it. Um, so, pretty much when having like everything kind of being connected. Um, our trapper is not just for trapping, as Zach was saying. Um, it's what lets us climb, and it's also our amp scoring mechanism. I think that was really helpful because it gave us so much freedom with our shooter of letting it be just a shooter, not necessarily for amp and speaker. So this can also, do you want to do some amp presets? We're able to score on either side of the robot with the amp. Um, it's very helpful. It's nice to have a different subsystem that's for so many different things. Yeah, have that multifunctionality in this game, I think, especially when you want to do everything is so important to have. And Cybertooth has done it really, really well here. So congratulations on a great robot. I think there's a lot of cool stuff that teams can learn from in this. Uh, so Cybertooth, once again, here at Mishawaka, looking for big things. Good luck here. And of course, throughout the rest of the competition season. Thanks a lot. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions.